Hey everyone and welcome to the Enser studio. I'm Jens Enser and today we're going to talk about collecting stuff. I don't per se collect much of anything and that might be a surprise to some of you. I have a feeling that a lot of you guys are collecting knives or collecting anything else for that matter. I used to be a collector, a lot of people would probably call me a collector. I just don't collect anything specific. And I don't, and I emphasize that, I don't collect knives. That said, I do have at least one of the three biggest giant mouse knives collection in the world. That's pretty much a given when I'm uh, one of the founding members and designers. One of the only things that I've been passionate about collecting was matches. This particular one is King Christian X of Denmark, who ruled from 1912 to 1947 in Denmark. So this is roughly 100 years old, maybe a little less. But I had an extensive collection of matches or match books or match boxes when I was a kid. That interest stopped for me when I was 12, 15 years old, but I still notice matches when I'm in a convenience store or especially when I'm traveling, I, I tend to notice matches. At some point, I think I had roughly 1500 different match boxes or match books from across the world. That's the only time where I really felt passionate about collecting. Now I would more call myself kind of a raven. If it shines, I need it. Or if it's cool, I need it. But I don't collect anything in particular. What you might actually say is that I collect stories. I collect small pieces of gear or memorabilia that has some kind of connection to me or my friends friends or people around me. For instance, this wood chisel was one that I found in my house when I built this studio. I built this studio around 10 years ago and when I tore up the old floor that sadly couldn't be saved, I found this and it kind of looked brand new except it had surface rust. But the house was built in 1894, I believe. So it's been down there for a full hundred years plus. And I'm sure that whoever lost this was cursing himself or maybe his boss was cursing him because he lost a really good chisel. That's for me, that's just such a cool story. And I have it on display in my studio. Other things that you could say that I collect or am fascinated by is handwork. These are stamps or dies made to shape either a button or a brush or something like that. And, and these are hand carved out of steel. And I'm just so tremendously impressed by the work of that craftsman, maybe 100 years ago or 70 years ago, who made these. So while they don't have a close story to me and I have no idea who made these, I just find the craftsmanship enormously fascinating. I have a small collection of steel frame jewelry, all made by my friend Derek Obatake, and he just have such eye for detail and patina, and his stuff is just amazing. This. I mentioned in an earlier episode is a collaboration between Derek and my friend Lucas Burnley. But the rest of these are, well, this is a V3 carabiner that Derek put his skull on. I love these. This was a wallet chain that Derek made. And I believe this was one of, if not the first wallet chains that he made. And he custom made this for me. I just find that so enormously cool. Other stuff that I enjoy is people who engrave. I had this custom engraved, this Snow Peak titanium flask, an old Stanley box cutter. They don't necessarily have any sentimental meaning to me, but I just think they're super cool. Of course, I have a bunch of friends in the knife making community, so I also have a small but very cool knife collection, very small. This whole cabinet over here, an old drawing cabinet from an architect, I would presume, is filled with knives. I've, I haven't counted it. Maybe I should have counted it for today. I have hundreds of knives in here, but it's not a collection. It's just 
knives in this top drawer is the GM line combined with what I have up here. Of course, it's a complete GM line from one to 10. Incidentally, I just came back from Blade Show and Giant Mouse won the best overall knife with the GMX. If that's not cool, I don't know what is. We also have the Ace line. And I have just drawers packed with knives. I use most of them or some of them, but one that I that I enjoy is this one, which is a prototype for the Filson project. Last year we did a um, collaboration with Filson where we did a tour between all the Filson stores in the US or most of them, I guess. I took one of the Clyde's apart a couple of years ago and then engraved the Filson logo on it with the anticipation of doing something with Filson. And all of us in, in Giant Mouse are just big Filson fans, so it made, made sense. So these are just some of the knives from the Enzo drawer. This is the Spyderco Rock Lobster, which was my first factory collaboration. The uh, Zero Tolerance 0220. Incidentally, that was what allowed me to buy a Rolex. I set that as a goal for me. When I signed a contract with Zero Tolerance, I would buy myself a Rolex. The first design project with Fox, the FX302. This is one of the, the newer models with Boker. This is the Orso with Viper. All of these have some kind of meaning to me, of course. I still don't consider it a collection. It's just a bunch of knives, right? One of the main reasons why I don't feel like I'm collecting is that my interests are so broad. I want a little piece of everything. And if I had to be collecting with that mindset, there is not enough money in the world. Or <laughs> maybe there is, but I don't have it. One of the closest things that I could say that comes near a collection or a micro collection is from my friend Dmitry Sinkovich. And I actually have four pieces of his, which is I would say as close as a collection as you can come when your name is Jens Enzo. I have a custom folder. I have the FCK friction carabiner knife. I have an actual carabiner and I have a pre-production prototype of a pen he designed for Chirogorov. I really like his stuff and I consider him a friend in the industry. So. I enjoy having pieces from my friends in the industry. That's the level of interest I have for collecting things within knives. I don't have from all of my friends, but I have from some of my friends. These are all knives from my friends. This is a workhorse from my friend Tom Crine. This has seen some serious use and is in not the greatest shape, but it's a tool and I think Tom would appreciate it. A one-of-a-kind fixed blade from Jesper Voxness. This is the Quiken fixed blade from my buddy Lucas Burnley. This one is actually the only custom folder that I own besides Dmitry Sinkovich. This is from a French maker. Raphael Durand. I bought this at Blade Show a number of years ago and it's just such a sweet piece. Other knives I have here, I buy them mainly because I want to look at the mechanism. For instance, this is a sort of, I wouldn't call it high end, but high level slip joint made by Chris Reeve knives. So it's a, it's a production knife. I just really, really like it. It's, it's cool. And it's a design by Bill Harsey, which is also one of my friends. And then we have this weird little thing. I don't know how it fits in with the rest, but this is an Eskils tuner knife, which is a folding fixed blade. It's my best description of it. So it's probably 100 years old and it folds inside the handle, but now it's a fixed blade. I got it because I'm fascinated by the mechanism and it's so simply made. I just think it's cool. I know that several of you have asked to see my knife collection. I hope that uh, what you've seen here today give you some kind of insight in how my mind works and what I don't collect. 
And uh, I would love to hear more about what you collect. Obviously, there's a lot of you who collect knives, but do you collect anything a little crazy? Not too crazy, but just a little crazy. I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit like. If you didn't, write me a comment why you hated it. I will definitely answer you. If you have any questions, suggestions or anything, write me a comment. I will answer all of them. And uh, remember to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much.